I played Terraria for the first time on console nearly a decade ago. My first memories of the game included unique content like Dragon Armor and Okram, content that was lost to time after 1.3 came to console. Unfortunately, I never got around to trying out mobile exclusive content like Turco or Elipus before the platform updated. But what if there was a way to relive my first memories of the game while also trying out the mobile content I never got to experience? Well, look no further than Terraria for the 3DS. Now, unfortunately, this means I have to play Terraria on the 3DS, but hey, how bad could it be? To get the true 3DS experience, I grabbed the game off the eShop before it went down back in March of this year, which means this is being recorded straight from the 3DS so you'll have to forgive me if the video looks rather scuffed. <laughs> Anyways, you start by creating your character just like any other version of Terraria. The first big difference is when you get to world creation. There's no expert or master mode yet, so we're stuck on normal. You also can't choose the world evil. Your only options are normal or expanded world. And I know how crazy this is going to sound, but after briefly trying out the controls, the game felt really good. It makes great use of the two screens, you get this cool build mode, the inventory works well, and you can utilize both the touchscreen and your typical controller layout. Right out the gate, I much prefer this to mobile, which was a welcome surprise. After using the build mode to create some houses, we were off to mine, which is when it became painfully obvious that there was no quick select button for torches, something that I heavily rely upon. That being said, we seem to have a bargain bin shine potion permanently active on our character, so I suppose it could be worse. Whoa, look at this. Oh, I forgot the houses were like this. Look how scuffed the houses were back in the day. Oh, we can get Water Bolt. Wait, 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 wait. We gotta go the other way. Back in the day, one of the best ways to kickstart your playthrough was the Rush Dungeon for the Water Bolt. If you got lucky, you could find it above the Dungeon Guardian spawn. Unfortunately, we saw no such luck. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> However, there were several ways to sequence break in these older versions. I was debating fishing up the Reaver Shark, which pre-1.4 could mine Hellstone, but I didn't really feel like fishing. So instead, we set our sights on acquiring some Meteorite, which is as easy as destroying one Shadow Orb. No World Evil Boss kill required. Oh, Meteorite! Wait, that's huge. Oh, did we just skip to- <laughs> we just skipped a space gun. <laughs> and before long, we were able to craft Meteor Armor and a space gun. After which, we found our first game-breaking exploit. Okay, I want to try this. So apparently, potion sickness goes down if you're in your inventory. Unlike the new versions of Terraria, when you go in your inventory on the 3DS, a separate menu obscures the screen, and the game pauses so you don't die while you can't see what's going on. Which would be totally fine if everything paused. If you have enough potions, you can't die in this game. <laughs> and with that in mind, I figured there was no reason not to just rush some bosses. I spent some time searching for an eye summon, but couldn't find one, so instead I got started on a Skeletron Arena, which was way more annoying than it should have been. Okay, this is really annoying to build. I guess I'll have to do this. Does this make it easier? <laughs> Shit, it's so annoying. Because you, you can't go too far down. Oh my god. I guess I have to do this. I can't move and do it at the same time. <laughs> so we have a torch. I'm gonna try and place it. Oh my god. That's so bad. <laughs> Ew. Oh! I guess we're doing the eye. Maybe we can do both if we have no time for Skeletron. We should. It should die quick. Alright, here we go. Oh, his blue text through is awoken. Alright. So, this is going to be very easy. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is... Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> I can't... Wait. <laughs> oh, no. Chat, I can't grapple away because I'm targeting the boss. The grapple goes <laughs> towards the boss. <laughs> okay, that's very annoying. That is extremely annoying. Our movement would have been so clean had that not been a thing. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do both. There's gonna be no skulls, right? Oh, look how, how little health it has. <laughs> it's been way too long since I played. Oh, and look how slow it is, too. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, no skulls. Super, super slow. If I somehow lose this, I have to retire. <laughs> I don't know why I buffed this. All right, I'm no longer worried about this playthrough, at least until like post mech, probably. Well, maybe even mechs, maybe even twins would be hard, but 
With Skelly out of the way, we could enter the dungeon, an area that was very annoying with 3DS controls. Luckily, I didn't have to stay long because all we needed was a Shadow Key and the Cobalt Shield, which by the way, looks super different in this version. After exploring the dungeon, I defeated the Brain with no trouble at all and acquired the Deathbringer Pickaxe to use for our elevator. Normally, you'd head down to hell anyways after Skeletron, but in this version, there are two extra reasons. The first of which is the Drax. Yes, you heard me correctly, the post all mech bosses drill. No, this is not a nerfed version. For some reason, this just exists pre-R mode in shadow chests. So how does this affect our playthrough? Well, in pre-R mode, this thing just casually does double the damage of our Miramaza. And in hard mode, once the chlorophyte spawns, we can mine it immediately. Which means we can get turtle armor and a shop bow pre-mex. And again, this is all in normal mode. The second reason I came down here was for the Shranga. This is, or I guess was, a mobile exclusive, and an almost equally broken item. By combining two Molten Furies and somewhere else stone, you get a bow with higher base damage and the ability to transform normal arrows into spectral arrows. 16 base damage arrows that apply the Cursed Inferno debuff. With this in our loadout, it made much more sense to focus on Ranger, so I spent a bit of time farming in the dungeon for the Necromer. It was during this farming session when Twitch chat informed me of Heart Arrows. Heart Arrows are now 3DS exclusive content since Mobile moved out to 1.3. Additionally, they are only available in February for the Valentine's Day event. And across all the versions and updates of Terraria that I've played, they are without a doubt the most broken item I have ever come across. But you'll see what I mean a little later in the video. For now, it's time for a different seasonal event on the 3DS. This time, it's Thanksgiving. Now, at the time of recording this, it was well before November. However, we can circumvent this issue by simply changing our system time to the correct month. With that out of the way, the merchant would now sell the summon for Turquor, an old mobile exclusive boss. Okay. Oh, what the hell? I've seen the fight, I didn't- Whoa! <laughs> this thing's crazy! Wait, what do you do here? I'm so dead. What? This thing's cracked. I'm gonna have to do a little cheese chat. How far can it reach? Wait, I don't think it can go this far. Oh, it despawned. Shit, that's hard. There's no way I'm beating that. But yeah, it feels like it feels like a hard mode boss. Like you, I would need much better maneuverability to effectively dodge some sort of dash. Because <laughs> holy shit, that's fast. And the range on it's crazy too. So we were gonna bring out the big guns for this next one. There it is. Look at that, the holy hand grenade, dude. Oh my God. By combining five dynamite, some gold bars and some bottled water, you get the highest base damage item across all iterations of Terraria. Okay, it's just kind of chilling. And I'm okay with this. I don't like when it goes over top, that's so scary. That's so fast! <laughs> Holy shit. I think I have to preemptively move. I don't even know if I can, like, react and move in time. Alright, that's... That's one, I think. That's one. I think I go for it. I think I go for it. Holy hand grenade! Wait for it. That's so funny, dude. <laughs> oh my god, that is awesome. Let's go! Hell yeah. We're in a plenty. Dude, look how broken this is. Restore 120 life. It's not consumable. We have infinite healing. <laughs> Truly infinite healing right now. This is so broken. Also, look how fat that blast radius was. That is insane. All of- all, all of that. <laughs> Dude, why am I actually enjoying the 3DS version of this game? I, I, <laughs> I don't get it. This is supposed to be, oh, super painful, like worst way to play funny video, but it's genuinely like good. There's all these goofy things. Uh, you know what? I think I will take this. No. Oh my God, that bug is so dumb. I've lost so many potions. This was another game-breaking bug, but not in the good way. In 30s Terraria, you can hover over usable items like potions in your inventory, go back, and they'll be on this pseudo quick select menu. This saves you from having to transfer the buffs to your hotbar every time you want to use them. But every now and then, the item will just get erased from existence. As you can imagine, this is incredibly annoying, and it seemingly happens at random. So if you try this version out for yourself, do be careful of that. All right, chat. What do you think the odds are that we can do to Queen Bee like right now? Why are there two? <laughs> Why are there three? 
Can I put a campfire down at least? We should, we should like kind of do something, especially if there's going to be multiple. I don't think it'll let us do multiple, but we should probably be somewhat prepared, I think. We must have. Shit. Oh, I was, why did I grapple? Oh, you, you can spawn more than one. <laughs> you can spawn more than one. I feel like there's no way we can kill three. Not with our rocket boots. Time to fight three queen bees. Easy, right, chat? Holy shit, they do so much. Well, actually, not that much, but like, considering there's three of them, that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. Oh, and there's gonna be so many bees, too. I love how you can just spawn multiple. That's kind of evil. Like, for a normal playthrough, you're just doing your thing. And you know when you accidentally spawn Queen Bee? Imagine accidentally spawning, like, multiple. <laughs> like, damn. Okay, that's one. I think we got the Shuranga though. <laughs> it's so broken. Armadrax, the last one. <laughs> there we go. Got him. Got him. Easy. With Queen Bee out of the way, I figure it was about time to hop back in that time machine. So, if we talk to you, hard arrows. So these only do four range damage, but it stuns. Now, before we try them out on Leapus, the Easter boss. I needed to get the Molten Bow, because the Shranga will just convert these to Spectral. Let's do this, gamers. We win these free. Alright, so we have we have the Hard Arrows. Uh, it should stun it. Yeah, look. It just can't move. <laughs> Wait, is this just a stun log? <laughs> this is so broken. Okay, I'll stop using these in like a little bit, but it's also very funny. We're putting those away, we're putting those away. I wouldn't realize it for a while, but this was a huge mistake. Alright, pretty easy so far. Is that egg gonna blow up? That looks like it's gonna blow up. Oh! Uh... This is awkward. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, what? Oh no. I see, I see, okay. Why is there one down there, dude? Oh shit. No! <laughs> Do they all have the same health? Please tell me they at least don't have the same health. Oh, wrong bow. Uh, this might be GG, chat. This might be GG. I'm starting to think that we should have used the hard arrows. <laughs> I'm not at risk of dying. I'm at risk of just getting overrun by too many bunnies to kill. I'll run out of arrows. Like, I don't think I'll die. As soon as you let the first one spawn, it's just GG. Especially when it doesn't destroy. I think I just lost as soon as I let one spawn in. Oh! That's a fun fight though. That's funny. And even after realizing how the fight works, it was still tricky to keep track of all the eggs. How much health does this thing have? It's got quite a lot. We're doing lots of damage, but that health bar is not really moving that much. Wait, what? Oh. Oh no. So after several minutes of frustration, I said enough is enough. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna stun lock it. So, I don't know if it can even do anything now. I think it just straight up can't. Who thought this was a good I mean, to be fair, it's a one, one day event, but still. Oh my god. Oh, and by the way, this boss has a 1% chance to drop three souls of might. Why? Uh, well, you see, with three souls of might in pre -hard mode, you can't actually do anything. They're all hard mode recipes. So, just for fun, I guess. <laughs> Could be wrong about this, but I think we don't even have to build an arena for wall flesh because of how broken this is. Like, I bet you we could just sit there and, and just shoot it. Wait, genius idea. Throw down holy hand grenades, stun it with the heart arrows, and then GG. So again, take on hungry step one. And once that happens, I think we're good. I guess the blasts would probably take them out as well. Um, Okay, we're gonna do it. So. We swap this on. Very important. We switch to this bow. We target the mouth. So now it's stunned. So we throw one of those. And we stun it. Please hit. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do this again. And then stun it. And then freeze. That worked way too good. <laughs> it 
That sound effect, dude, it's so funny. It's so funny, dude. With Wild Fletch defeated, we could put our Drax to use and skip straight to Glorify Gear. I then made a quick farm for Turtle Shells and ended up also getting an Uzi, which was pretty cool too. As if we couldn't get more broken, while gathering some Chlorophyte, I noticed that Life Fruit was already spawning. Wait. What? Life Fruit? <laughs> okay, we have not killed any mechs still, but that's a thing. Awesome. So with our 71 defense, Shapo, and some Life Fruit, we started taking on the mechs. And he's that. Okay, wait, is this hard arrows? <laughs> Did that just do four damage to me? <laughs> Please tell me I, I saw that wrong. Okay, so the hard arrows do absolutely nothing. Oh, okay, we're actually taking damage. We're actually taking kind of a lot of damage. <laughs> just, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Also, how do holy arrows work? These are not working how I thought they did. Am I gonna lose to Destroyer? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Dude, I thought that'd be, this would be so free, but for some unholy reason, the probes hit so hard. Like, the probes hit harder than, or just as, Destroyer's face. Like, why is that a thing? <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> How much contact damage we take? We take up with six. Actually, maybe I just do this. Yeah, we just do this. Because that'll protect us from the probes. Yeah. I think that's our best strat. Because the probes just do too much. But the contact damage is nothing. <laughs> I mean, there we go. We did it. All right. We did it. Everything's okay. Which, actually, I'm curious to see what would happen if we just hard arrow, say, spasmatism. Like, how does... <laughs> what happens then? All right. So if we just hit spaz there. <laughs> okay, maybe we can prevent it from transforming. You guys think? Yes, you can! It's trying to transform right now! <laughs> See how it's spinning? <laughs> oh my god, dude, I'm dying. That's so broken! Okay, I'm not gonna waste any more hard arrows on this, because we totally have it. And... It should be just about dead. There it is. I think we're ready to just get in here. Now we just do this. Damn, we've already done so much damage. And... It is... Oh my goodness. Jungle grows restless, chat. We've done it. I don't know what it has to load here. It, isn't it just Plantera Bulbs being able to spawn? Alright, so now we just gotta find the Plantera Bulb. And then we see if we can just... Do kind of do what we just did again, but to Plantera. <laughs> like, just turbo cheese it and call it a day. Okay. <laughs> it's begun, chat. <laughs> it has begun. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta, like, get back, though. Because I can't be right close to it for phase two transformation. Now, I, of course, could have done this normally, but I was feeling really lazy and didn't want to make a proper arena. Also, for some reason, in this version of Terraria, one dynamite costs one gold and 50 silver. And since that's usually how I clear out these arenas, I figured I'd just do the cheese. That, that should be, yep, mm -hmm. there we go. Good fight. So yeah, back in the day, for those who didn't know, there used to be key molds. Uh, nowadays, you just get the key and then once Plantera is defeated, you can open it. You used to need a temple key, the souls of fright, might, and sight, plus the key mold to make the key. I'm still not quite sure what happened here because the biome chest is supposedly guaranteed to spawn on your worlds, but I just couldn't find the crimson chest in our dungeon. In fact, I couldn't find any biome chests. So I made a new world. This wasn't that big of a deal, however, as we actually need to do this anyway before we can fight Okram. Because for some absurd reason, you needed specifically adamanti bars to craft the suspicious looking skull. Okram's boss up. And of course, ours had titanium. As you may recall, we get next to no options when creating a new world, so we just had to hope we got a crimson, which unfortunately we did not. However, there was still a chance for some adamantite, so I dug down to hell, waited until a voodoo demon spawned, killed Wildflesh, and checked out the hard mode ores. Okay, cross your fingers, chat. If this is not adamantite, we gotta do another one. It is not adamantite. Okay, we have palladium. We have Oh, is it? Are they? They're sets of three, right? We already know we got it. No, they're not. No, they're not. What the hell? That's three. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We have Palladium. We have Mithril. And you guys ready for Adamantite? 
Bro, 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 bro. We did get Crimson though, so I quickly got the Vampire Eyes before moving on to the next world. Now I'm cutting through all this so it may not seem that bad, but again, let me reiterate that every single time we want to check the ores, we have to first kill Wild Flesh because the altars cannot be destroyed until you do so. So we have to repeat this tedious process of going down to hell, grinding a Voodoo Demon, and killing Wall every time before we can check the ores. It does exist, right? Like, it does It does exist that you can get Adamantite. Because, like, that right now, I, I, I'm i starting to think maybe maybe not. That's, what is that, six, seven times in a row we've gotten Titanium? And if you only had to do it a couple times until you win the coin flip, fair enough. But when that coin refuses to land in your favor, it gets rather frustrating. And Adamantite. Dude, dude. Are we sure it exists? Are we sure? Because right now it ain't looking like it. The desperation was so bad that I even tried to reset my game to right before I destroy the altars to see if the results would change. Which, of course, did not work. Okay, we have... Cobalt. Orc Alchem. Wait! Hold! These are new. Dude, goaded. In the end, it took nearly two hours to find a world with adamantite. But with that, we could get all the necessary ingredients for the Ilkram summon. Which, of course, just had to be incredibly annoying to craft as well. Now, in order to get this skull, we need five souls of light, five souls of night, two... Why two mech eyes, bro? That's so annoying. So painful. So painful. And with that, we can get our suspicious looking skull. Finally, dude. <laughs> okay, we're gonna awoken. Oh, hi. All right, yeah, he's got lasers and then little servant things. So yeah, it's like brain, it's like Harmo brain kinda. Looks really funky too. I don't know when you're supposed to fight this thing, to be honest, because... <laughs> I mean, even, even without vampire knives, like how much damage would be, we'd be taking right now? Okay, that it does a decent amount of contact. Second phase is bullet hell. Wait, there's a phase two? Oh, there's a phase two. Oh, yeah, right. Right, yeah. <laughs> Vampire knives are so broken. <laughs> like, I don't actually have to move here, I don't think. So, back in the day on console versions of Terraria, there were three post Okram sets that the player could obtain. Dragon, Titan, and Spectral Armor. And just like with everything to do with Okram, they were ridiculously tedious to obtain. To mildly help with the grind, upon defeat, Okram has a 1 in 3 chance to drop an armor piece from one of the sets. Since I'm looking specifically for dragon armor, I will then have to hit another 1 in 3 chance again to get a dragon armor drop. Combine that with how difficult the summon is to obtain, and this method of farming didn't seem too practical. Or at least not initially. Like, we could we could spawn this again, but it takes 10 out of Mantite bars. The only way that would be worth is if we got a dragon piece. Wait, did I see something? No, <laughs> why couldn't you be the other one? <laughs> don't get it, just reload. The, dude, you're so smart. Dude, you're so smart. Oh, don't save. Don't save. Close. Close. Dude, thank you. This is the dragon arrow drop. This actually is. This actually is it. I can see the future. Yes, it actually was. That's the mask. Honestly, the one I wanted to see the least, but I will take it. All right. We're hoping for the, the chest piece, but the legs would be amazing too. And nine Okrams later, we got our grease. That's, um, yes, we got the boots. <laughs> that was the first drop. Yes, we did it, okay. With just one armor piece left, even with the reload idea, it didn't seem worth it. But I needed mithril because again, the recipe calls for very specific hard mode ores. And with no shimmer in this update to swap these hard mode ores, I had to again make a new world. Fortunately, this time it only took one try. We did it. This is huge. But here we go. Dragon breastplate. So we lose a few points of defense. Okay, let's take this off. It's been replaced. Damn, dude, look at the drip. <laughs> Darga mode. Oh, we're so cool now. We are so cool now. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. I kind of should probably get the Tombagiri thing. I think that's all we need. Oh, and then Souls of Light, but that's probably already on us. All right. So, I can get upgraded. There it is. It does look pretty sick. 67 damage, actually. Pretty good. We upgraded. Holy shit, the speed on that. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Wait, that's pretty quick. I think that's because of our dragon armor. What is... You guys see that under my character when I'm... 
<laughs> Anyways, let's go by Golem. Check out this damage right now. Never better do. Check out this damage. It's it's doing something. I mean, yeah, this is before the Golem buffs, but it's it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Don't don't look though. Don't look at what's happening right now. This is this weapon doesn't exist. This one doesn't count. And look, look. That was all with the Tombagiri. So strong. Such a strong weapon. I'm glad we got that. Yeah, it's just it's just Fishron. That's all that's left. Which I am very, very scared of. <laughs> Fishron is usually my favorite fight, but it's only when I feel as though I have good control over my character. And while the 3DS has played much better than I thought it would, Fishron would really put these controls to the test. Here we go, chat. The final fight. And... You guys will see why. Wait, I just duped the iron skin. You guys see that? Either I had two iron skins, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Or I duped it, because I just buffed with it. It's down there on the bottom left, but we still have it. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. There we go. Please no bug, please spawn. It does, okay. Holy shit, that did a lot. <laughs> okay, these, these wings are kind of crazy though. I, I'm a little scary for phase two. Phase two seems very scary. <laughs> but yeah, and I never got ninja gear, which is you know, probably a mistake, you could say. But, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll live. Why is that iron skin depleting so fast? <laughs> what? What happened to that iron skin? Compa look, compared to the regen, we sit it at the same time. Uh-oh. Oh no. Wait, this is a hard. Wait, this is actually kind of hard. <laughs> okay, wait. We still have it, though, so we can just use it again. Dude, I got infinite iron skins! <laughs> it's, it's bugged. <laughs> For some reason, I have infinite iron skins. It's not using it. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna... Oh, get hit by the shark, but that's okay. That's A-OK. -okay. Oh my god, that did so much. <laughs> if I get below half, we gotta pull up the you-know-what. Oh! Scary. So scary. It's gotta be close to dying, though. It's gotta be close. It's gotta be close. We have this. We win these. I swear it's dead, dude. I swear it's dead. <sighs> My health bar. You guys see that? Okay. We're going to sit here for a bit. <laughs> that was bad positioning on my part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, heal, and then come back in here and not mess up. So like that. Boom. Now... Duke Fishron's about to hit us, which is very scary. That is extremely scary. So hopefully we can get a heal off before that happens. Okay, ready? It didn't work. Oh, because it's not on this. Oh, that was so bad. We might be dead. How much health did the boss have? Can I think I can kill it quickly? It's gotta be so low. I just need to get out of here. But we're in such a bad spot. Here. That's selected. Oh, that's the wrong button. We're so dead. I think the shark's on their way too. All right, I'm just gonna go. Yep. <laughs> Turns out this is pretty tricky to do optimally under pressure. I probably should have just used the cross necklace because then even with the miss inputs, we would have had plenty of time to get the heal off. But hindsight is 2020, so it was back to the mushroom biome for me. And to make matters worse, this is well before the made truffle worms were common. So I wouldn't get back to this fight for another 30 minutes. Something I haven't really emphasized enough in this video is just how much the limited vision impacts the game, especially with such a fast, hard-hitting boss. Now, it certainly doesn't help that I was too lazy to grind for the ninja gear, but I mean, this is normal mode. I wouldn't even need the gear to take on Vishron if this was PC. Oh, I didn't think that would be here. Okay, well, we might be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's how that goes. Oh, big damage here, big damage here, big damage here. Huge damage. Okay, we'll stay in the top row. Stay in the top row. Till now. It's almost dead. Almost got him. Just a little more. Go left. And we'll drop now. And we got him. And it's so free. And it's it was so free. It was so free. GG's. We did it. 3D Stray completed. Like, honestly, pretty fun. Actually really cool. And absolutely worth a playthrough. Not even just for, oh, hey, it's got all this cool stuff that you either have A, never seen before, or haven't seen in a very long time. But it's also, it just kind of works good. 
it, it works pretty well. It's definitely no PC Terraria, but it's for what it is, it's pretty sick. So yeah, that was 3ds Terraria. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos.